Hey there, my name is Kelly Dale and I'm owner of Off the Beaded Path which is located in Forest City, North Carolina. For today's video, we're going to continue the carnival set. A few weeks ago, I showed you how to make um, the earrings, uh, which are the firecracker earrings, but I'm going to show you a couple of samples. You seen them last week in the video, at the beginning of the video, the carnival earring samples that I've done to go with the carnival bracelet. So, my plan was to do the carnival necklace this week, and I was designing a pendant to go with the necklace when I said, oh my gosh, this will make a great ring for the set. So, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make the ring, because part of the ring actually will um, draw over to next week for the pendant for the necklace. So, what you're going to need for the ring today is 24 size 3 bugle beads. These are 6 millimeter, just standard size bugles. You're going to need 92 size 11 seed beads, 1 gram of a size 15 seed bead, 1 14 millimeter rivoli, 18 to 24 3 millimeter faceted glass rounds, and these are going to be for the ring band, 12 inches of 0.5 millimeter stretch magic, two yards of four pound fire line, and one size 12 beading needle. So let's go ahead and get all your materials together and then this we'll get started. This is a ring that I want to show you how to make today. It uses the same color as the colors that I did for the bracelet sample for the carnival set. Um, let me see if I can find it. Here we go. So it's the same colors, um, uses the beagle beads, whole nine yards, and you'll see how this ring plays into the set later on next week. But um, this would be the ring, the bracelet, and then I've got the earrings that go with it. Each color set that I've done, I have, um, have those now. And then here is the blue version, the cobalt blue version, and I think it's really pretty, really bright, and the different colors make them look really, really different. Today, I want to show you how I'm going to use the, um, the topaz colors and some more fallish type colors. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to need is one yard of thread onto your needle. Let me pull some of my beads down here. You want to, first thing, you want to look at all your bugles that you're using. You want to make sure that they're all the same width all the same um, diameter as far as how wide they are. You just don't want any that are going to be misshapen or um, might not work, you know, work too well. So, one bugle two elevens. One bugle, two elevens. One bugle, two elevens. One bugle, and two elevens. So you'll have four of each kind. So I've got four bugles and four sets of the elevens. You want to bring those down leave yourself a little bit of a tail and you're going to go back through all 12 of those beads once again. Pull that through. Now when you tie these two threads together, do not tie them really tight. If you tie them super tight, then you are going to be saying some very, very naughty bad words, and I don't want you to have to do that. So just listen to what I say and just make it a really loose loop. I promise you, you won't regret it. All right. So I have my loose, my loosey loop. Take the needle, go through the bugle, and one eleven. Pick up two elevens. Go through the next eleven bugle and eleven. Pull this on through. And when you pull it through, your two new beads should sit on top of the two old beads. 
two 11's, go through the next 11, bugle, and 11. Pick up two 11's, go through the next bugle, or I'm sorry, 11, bugle, and 11. And then last time here, we want two 11's, go through the 11, the bugle, and then the 11. Now when you go through that 11, if you'll look there, that's the, um, the last 11 for our row, and then we're going to need to step up through this first 11 right above it. So I'm going to go through the bead first, and then make sure that my two new beads lay the way they should. Then I'll step up by going up through the first bead here on the left, because that was the first bead I added in the row. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that little tail there. Now this time, I'm going to just go through the 11 right next to where I'm coming out. I'm not picking up anything. I'm going to pick up 115. I'm going to go through the bugle. Adjust the bugle. Then 115. And I'm going to go through that top 11. Go through the bead, the 11, right next to where your thread's coming out. Pick up 115. Go through the bugle. Pick up 115 and go through the top 11. Go through the 11 right next to where you're coming out. Pick up 115 and go through the bugle. 115 and go through the top 11. Go through the 11 right next to where your thread's coming out. Pick up 115 and go through the bugle. And then pick up a 15 and go through that top 11. So this is what you'll have so far. All right, I'm going to pick up two 11s, go down through the 11 and the 15. So I'm going through two beads there. Pick up one bugle bead, and I'm going to go through the 15 and the 11 right after it. Two 11s, go through the 11 and the bugle, the 11 and the 15, sorry. Pick up one bugle and go through the 15 and then the 11 right after it. You want to pick up two 11s, go through the 11 and the 15. Pick up one bugle and go through the 15 and the 11. So you have to do this one more time. So two 11s, go through the 11 and the 15, and then one bugle, and you're going to go through the 15, and then the two 11s above it. This is our step up. So the 15. And then the two 11s above it. I'm not going to pick up anything on the corners in this round, so I'm going to go down through one bead, pick up two 15s, and go through the bugle. 
two 15s and go through the top 11. And you want to pull it so that it starts to dome up. Go down through the next 11, pick up two 15s, go through the bugle, two 15s, and go through that top 11. Go through the 11. Now you want two 15s and go through the bugle. Two 15s and go through the top 11. Go through the 11. Two 15s and go through the bugle. And now two 15s and I'm going to come through this top 11. So that once you've got that pulled, this is what the front will look like from a side view and from the back. Pick up one 11 and come through the 11 and the two 15s. That's going to make a little point in the corner. Pick up one bugle and go through the two 15s and the 11. Pick up one 11 and go through the 11 and the two 15s. Pick up one bugle. Go through the two 15s and the 11. One 11. And go through the 11 and the two 15s. One bugle. And go through two 15s and the 11. One 11 and go through the 11 and the two 15s and then 111 and I'm going to go through the two 15s and the 11 and now the top of my ring is complete so this is the top this is from a side view and this is from the back view. So you're going to take and tie off the thread with a couple of half hitch knots. And then we want to do the same thing over Here is again. the completed top. Here is the bottom. If you'll notice, the bottom is one row smaller than the top. So all I did on the bottom is I did not do this last step where I added the one bead and then the bugle bead. So I just stopped with the two. On this first string that I made, I did do all three rows, and it worked out pretty good as far as how to connect it. But when I did the second one and I tried to do three and three, these frosted bugles made the bugles stick out really bad on the sides, and it didn't look good. So I worked and worked how to try to figure out how to fix it, and that's the best way to fix it, is just to not do that very last row on this bottom. Now you're ready to start connecting the two pieces together. So you're going to take your Rivoli and you're going to lay it down, uh, um, face down into the top of the ring. Then you're going to take the bottom. As you see, I'm coming out of a size 11 seed bead in a corner. I'm going to lay it down so that the corners meet. And then I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to start the zip up process. And it zips up just like peyote stitch zips up. So I'm coming out of the 11 here on the right. Sorry, the left. Bless me. Um, coming out of the one on the left, I'm going through the center bead here on the right. Then through the 11 on the left. My next set of beads here are 15s, so I'm going through the two 15s on the right.
and the bugle on the left. You're zigzagging back and forth from side to side. Go through the two fifteens on the right. The eleven on the left. Through the point on the right. Through the eleven on the left. The fifteens on the right. The bugle on the left. The two fifteens on the right. The eleven on the left. The point eleven on the right. The eleven on the left. And if it looks like your piece is kind of caving in here, you can take an ink pen, a pair of pliers, whatever you've got, and kind of push that back out. There we go. All right, so I'm going through the two 15s on the right. And this is where it starts getting hard to get through these beads again. Because they're so tight up against each other. Then I'm going through the bugle on the left. The two fifteens on the right. The eleven on the left. The point eleven on the right, the 11 on the left, two 15s on the right, the bugle on the left, we're almost done. We've got two 15s on the right. And then the 11 on the left. So now you've got it completely capsuled all the way around. This is what the front looks like. This is what the back looks like. You want to stitch down to come out of any one of these bugle beads here in the center on the back. Now that you're exiting the bugle, you're ready to start covering some of the center part up. Now listen to me. I know how some of us like to skip some steps, especially on Rivoli's, but you cannot skip these next few steps because if you do, the point on your Rivoli here is going to rub off and it's going to also scratch your skin and you won't want that. So, you want to pick up 111 and you're going to skip the two 11s and go through the next bugle. Now to me, this is the hard part of the ring because these bugles are so tight here on the back that it gets hard to get through them. So I'm coming out of the bugle and I'm going to start adding the ring band. So I'm going to pick up two 11s. One three millimeter round. I can actually pick up the round and not a rondelle. And then two 11s. Come back through this same bugle you were just coming out of to make a circle. And then we want to reinforce it by going through those um, five beads again. And then through the bugle bead one more time. 
Now we want to pick up 111, skip the two 11s, and come through the next bugle. Make sure that that 11 pops in towards the center. And if you go through an 11 right after a bugle, that's fine. Just back it out. Pick up one 11. Skip the two 11s and go through the next bugle. All right, I think I'm gonna have to switch my needles. I've been working with this needle all day, working on samples, ha ha ha. And it's getting to be a hot mess. Okay, so I'm coming out of the bugle that's opposite where I started the um, band. So I'm gonna add the other side to the ring band. So it's two 11s, a three millimeter round, and two 11s. And I'm gonna come back through that same bugle again to make a circle. There we go. You want to reinforce this loop again for the ring band. And then go through the bugle one more time. Pick up 111, you're gonna make sure you're not coming out of an 11. There we go. 111, skip the two 11s, and then go through this last bugle bead. Now you wanna step up through the first 11 in the center that you added. Pick up three 11s and go through the next 11. Pick up three 11s, go through the next 11. Three 11s and go through the next 11. And then three 11s and go through the next 11 and then through the first two of the next set of three. So you're basically coming out of that middle bead of a set of three. Pick up one 11 and go through the middle bead of the next set of three. One 11 and go through the middle bead of the next set of three. One 11 through the middle bead of the next set. And then one 11 and go through the middle bead of the next set and then step up through the first bead that you added in this last little round. So you'll have four beads here in the center. And you wanna go through those beads again, just going through those four beads to reinforce it and kinda of pull it tight. And you're ready now at this point, you can tie off the threads and you're done. I will suggest to you, if the front of your ring looks a little wonky, okay, which means it's kind of off to one side or whatever, you can go back and add the 11 in between the bugles like we did on the back. Here's an example of um, the purple one where you see I've went back and added that 11. So feel free to do that if you want to, if it's kind of wonky, but it's not necessary. It just helps to stabilize those bugles. So you wanna go ahead, tie your thread off. Um, if you've got enough thread, you can always go back through and reinforce these um, ring band sections here. The only problem is that when you do that, um, you might crack some of the bugles. So go ahead and tie this off and then we're ready to start the actual Once you band. had the ring tied off, then you're ready to start the ring band. 
So I've used my 0.5 millimeter stretch magic and I've put it through the three millimeter round of one of the band straps on each side of the ring. You wanna pick up one three millimeter onto each thread. Then pick up one three millimeter and you're gonna cross your threads opposite ways through the bead so that when you pull, there's your first right angle weave box. So pick up one three millimeter onto each thread and then pick up one three millimeter and cross opposite ways through the bead so that now you have two. And you're gonna continue adding these little right angle weave boxes until you've got the length that you need for the ring band. Be sure to end with one three millimeter onto each thread. Once you have the length and you have your two beads on each thread, then you're ready to finish the band. So you wanna to come to the other side of the ring band and you're gonna take one thread and go through the three millimeter on the other side. So I'm gonna go through the bead and it's gonna to pull together and then make a knot with your two threads, being careful not to get that three millimeter caught up inside of the knot. And I normally put a couple of really good knots in it. And then you're ready to trim those tails and you'll have your beautiful new ring. And again, this is the brown sample that goes with the um, brown carnival set. This is the blue sample that goes with the blue carnival set. And then this is the amethyst or in the purple that goes with the purple carnival set. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to make the carnival ring. We will have the three different color kits available on our website, off the beaded path bead store .com, as well as the written pattern. Um, next week, come back when we're going to learn how to do the carnival necklace. Not sure if it's going to be the pendant and then the necklace the following week or if I'm going to do it all in one, but um, be sure to be watching for that. And also, be sure to watch our next Must Know Monday video to learn a brand new technique. So I hope you guys have a great day, and we'll see you later.